All right, I'm gonna make a little video here on how to install bait drop on a 3DR Solo. I have here a nice little bait drop I whipped up on the 3D printer. Nice and light, weighs in about an ounce. It's got a extension cable on it with a quick connect. I'll go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, we're gonna start by getting off this cover. Pop these corners up with your thumbs. You push forward, it should pop right off. And be careful of that, it should go flying on you a little bit. Nothing broken, everything's in good shape. All right, now we're gonna pull some screws. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Screwdriver. All right, at this point, if you got all the screws loose, you're gonna wanna lift up and slide back slightly. The GPS cable's attached in here, so don't lift up too far, too fast. Reach in here, there's a little clip on the back side of it. You can kind of wiggle the lead wire loose. You see the little clip on the back side here. Let's set this off to the side. All right, now we're inside. We've got to get this wire somehow inside of there. Options, uh, we can go in one of these holes here. Uh, if you have a gimbal on there, those holes will still be the same. You can go inside here with the, if you have the static mount uh, with the HDMI cord or through the leg uh, that doesn't have an antenna, which would be this one here. I'm gonna go with the leg. Go ahead and remove that leg. I've already put a hole here where that wire can run inside the leg here in that groove where an antenna would be. That's where we're gonna run it. Flip it back over here. It's a little unstable. I'm gonna grab the end of our wire and slide it inside that hole. Right. Have it pulled through. I'm gonna go ahead and get that leg put back on there. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this real quick while I got this flipped over. This will sit right here. Comes with screws to attach it. about right there with the quick connects in the leg. I'm gonna get this run into so inside the solo body. Make sure it's routed behind everything here. Alright. Wire looks like this at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these apart. Pull them apart a couple inches. Didn't strip the wire back much, maybe an eighth of an inch or so, three sixteenths, something like that. Not a whole lot. Now we gotta get a little solder on those so we can get them in place. All right, so we're gonna get these wires connected. We'll go through one at a time here. Try to get this as close as I can so you can see it. So we've got these pins over here. These pins off to the side. There we go. You see them, they're numbered there. We're looking for pin number 19. That's gonna be the one we're gonna solder this white wire to. From there, if we look over here, you can see this where it says five volt plus. That's where we're gonna that's where we're gonna solder in the red wire. And then any ground will work. So we're just gonna run with the, the black one here. This is RR negative.
Got a little bit of solder already on the ends of them here. So that way I don't have to try to put solder on there while it's already in there. everything all soldered together at this point I went ahead and put a few pieces of heat shrink on there just for added measure uh, just because my soldering skills aren't that great so it started melting the insulator off then I taped everything down you can see a few pieces of small double-sided tapes so that way the wires aren't vibrating in there on the circuit board now we can go ahead and put the top back together assuming your solder joints are nice and snug don't forget to plug in your GPS connect your GPS connector underneath. Make sure you should hear a nice click. And this should all just fall right into place. If you're having to force it, something's not lining up, like maybe the battery connector or something like that. Just give it a wiggle, it'll go in. Get all these screws buttoned down. This will just clip right back on there. All right, we've got everything all buttoned down. Wiring's all attached with some double-sided tape. Everything's screwed together. We just need to change the parameter so it operates off the pause button. I've got the Solo turned on, controller's turned on, and I've got a Samsung Android tablet. I'm gonna open, I've got the Solo link connected. I'm gonna open up Tower app. Hit connect, go up here to the top left, hit parameters. This is everything that controls your solo, so don't change anything except for this parameter. We're going to type in RC7. We're looking for RC7 function is what we're looking for. We're going to change that zero and get this to move to a one. I can just click on it here. It gives you all the options. I'll click one. I've changed it to one. Close my keyboard. And it's going to say I have unsaved changes. We'll upload. And then that should instantly give your servo power. So if everything's soldered properly, everything should work at this point. Let's make sure it's working. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here so we don't change anything. Close that. Now if we flip this up, hold the pause button down for five to seven seconds, and there we go. Tap it once, it opens, five to seven seconds, it'll close. Easy as that. From there, if you use the rewind function, uh, do not try to load your payload release uh, without turning that off while it's in flight or there's a good chance it's going to fly into you. So just be careful of that. You can disable that with the Solo app, uh, the factory Solo app, pretty easily. Uh, same thing with the pause function if you don't want it to pause when it's dropping. Easy as that. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.